Would you like to see how to use the rules for the quantifiers in natural deduction? Yes, you would. That is why you're here. So that's what we're going to do. everyone, welcome back to Attic Philosophy. We are doing a series of videos introducing the basic concepts of logic and for the last few videos we've been looking at natural deduction. So we introduced natural deduction for propositional logic a few videos back and then we looked at the rules for first order logic, so that's the rules for the quantifiers. If you haven't watched those videos, go and watch them first and then come and do this one. If you're finding these videos useful, why not subscribe to the channel, get the updates. It would be great to have you on board. So we have here all the rules from propositional logic. And we have here the four additional rules for the quantifiers. If they don't make any sense, go back to the previous video and see the explanation of those. Now we're going to see how these rules work in practice. So I'm just going to focus on the two rules that are tricky, the introduction rule for the universal quantifier and the elimination rule for the existential quantifier. So let's first look at the introduction rule for the universal quantifier. And the rule basically says if you want to prove for all x a, what you've got to do is prove an arbitrary instance of it. So you pick an arbitrary name. It's basically going to be a new name and you prove what you want to prove for that name and you conclude that it holds for everything for all x. So let's look at an example. Suppose we want to prove this from if something is f then a is g to everything is such that if it's f then a is g. OK, so going from a existential to a universal, we should be able to prove this because if you think about how we do prenex normal form, this will turn into this. If you don't know what I mean by prenex normal form, go back to the video on first order logic. It's all explained in there. How are we going to prove this? Well, our conclusion is universally quantified, so we're going to need to use universal introduction. And it's basically going to be the final proof rule we use. So to prove this, we need to prove this for an arbitrary name. We've already used A, so we're going to use B as our arbitrary name. That's our goal. What does it look like? Start off writing out the premise. Now we want to prove a conditional for an arbitrary name B. To prove a conditional, we assume the antecedent. So we assume the antecedent for this arbitrary name B. Now because B is F, we can infer that something is f using existential introduction. We can then use this and this together with arrow elimination, modus ponens, to give us ga. We have assumed this, we've inferred this, so we can use arrow introduction. And this is our arbitrary instance of this. So using universal introduction, we get our conclusion. So let's just go over that once more. What are we aiming to do when we're looking at that blank piece of paper? We write down our premise. We want to prove a universally quantified thing. To do that, we need an arbitrary instance of this. It's an if then, so we assume the antecedent, an arbitrary instance of the antecedent. Since we've already used A, we used B here. From this, we can infer this, hence this. We assumed this, we concluded this. That gives us an if then. This is an arbitrary instance, OK? Because B here is an arbitrary name, we could conclude the universal generalization. So that is how you prove something, a conclusion which is universally quantified. OK, so now let's look at the existential elimination rule. This one's probably the trickiest one to remember and to use. So let's just think about what we're trying to do to use this rule. This is something we've already got in our proof. Suppose we have an existential in our proof. How do we use it? What this rule says is to get to a conclusion B, what you have to do is, first of all, assume an arbitrary instance of the existential and get from there to B. So in other words, you pick an arbitrary name, one you haven't used before, you make an assumption instantiating your existential with that name and you reason to be whatever it is you're trying to get to. And if you can do that, then you're allowed to conclude B outside the scope of that assumption. So if you can get to B within that assumption, you're allowed to conclude B without the assumption. 
So B is whatever it is you're trying to get to in your proof. Let's see how that works out in practice. OK, so let's look at this example here, going from something existentially quantified to a conjunction. Now, both of those conjuncts are themselves existentially quantified. So what's going on here is this existential is distributing over the conjunction, going from an existentially quantified conjunction to a conjunction of existentially quantified sentences. This one says that something is F and G, and this one says something's F and something is G. How do we prove it? Well, we are going to want to start off with our premise. In order to use that, we're going to need to use existential elimination. OK, so this is going to be our sentence B, the one that we're going to want to reason to. So basically, the rule says take an arbitrary instance of this and get to this. So we're going to begin with an arbitrary instance of this. We assume it and we're taking A to be our arbitrary name. How can we get to this? That's actually quite easy. So from this conjunction, we can use conjunction elimination to get FA. Existential introduction. So from FA to something is F. And then we can do the same with the other conjunct. OK, so conjunction elimination and existential introduction again. So we've got something is F something is G, we can use conjunction introduction to get something is F and something is G. Now that's the conclusion that we want, but at the moment it's within the scope of this assumption, so that's no good, except that's exactly the case where our existential elimination rule says we can move this from there to there. So let's do that. We get our conclusion outside the scope of our assumption. We've gone from here to here. We've done that proof. And the reason we can move it from here to here is because that's what our existential elimination rule allows us to do. So this one is tricky. You've got to memorize the rule and you've got to remember that it allows us to move from the B within the scope of the assumption to the B outside that scope. OK, so there are two really useful examples. Go through those a few times, get to grips with why the steps work the way they do. In particular, think about the strategy we used, why we assume the things we do, the role of the arbitrary names in those proofs and how they allowed us to get to the conclusions we wanted. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, why don't you drop me a comment below? If you're enjoying these videos, why not subscribe to the channel? That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,